Alrighty boys, it's about that time. Time for a definitive list of motorcycling. Today we'll be looking at the top 10 greatest motorcycles ever made. We will look at iterations of a few models and then also some models that have been largely unchanged for a long time, but one thing is for certain, these bikes are categorically S-tier bikes in their own right and are all pretty easily identifiable and will make most people jealous if you do happen to own one. A few considerations for this video for bikes that are going to find themselves on our greatest motorcycles ever made list were one number of units sold were these models popular it's not to say that the highest selling motorcycles of all time are the greatest but solid sales figures will definitely help the case two importance Did they change the motorcycling landscape were things just not the same after these bikes were introduced three character do they use style substance importance character is difficult to define but we're going to be looking for bikes that have it so sit back grab a snack and hang out because we're going in depth for today's video we'll look at each bike get a sound clip and discuss why they fall into the vaulted top 10 list of the best motorcycles of all time because lord knows i don't make top 10s very often now let's do this First up is the first generation Honda Fireblade or the 1992 CBR 900 RR. What can be said about the original blade that hasn't already been said? Honda's premier sport bike rocked the landscape back in the early 90s when it was touted as the flickability of a 600 but with the power of a 1000. To understand how far advanced the Fireblade was over its nearest competitor, it weighed 76 pounds less than a Yamaha FZR 1000. The late 80s and early 90s was a testing ground for manufacturers and it was a risk for Honda to make an open class bike like this at the time, but we are all better for it because it has truly the test of time as one of the finest sport bikes ever built. Suzuki is usually given credit for creating the first true modern super sport motorcycle as we know it today with the OG GSXR, but Honda came much closer to executing it perfectly with the 92 Fireblade. It featured an inline four cylinder mill with 893 cc's, making about 130 horsepower. It was a true rocket ship for the time. The iconic flat round headlights are now a signature and classic look for antique sport bikes, but combine that with the retro early 90s paint schemes, and you've got one of the coolest bikes you could rock up on on a bike night with. Let's get a sound check on the original blade. These classic sport bikes are increasing in value pretty quickly and it's plain to see why. The first generation CBR 900RR is a genre defining sport bike and will likely be one of the most sought after classic sport bikes and deserves a spot on our list today without question. Our next bike on the list of the 10 greatest motorcycles is none other than the Yamaha VMAX. The VMAX might be a bit of a surprise to those of you who are more diehard sport bike guys, but out of all the cruisers I could think of, the Yamaha VMAX stands heads and shoulders above the rest. Originally launched in 1984, the Yamaha VMAX was arguably the first muscle cruiser. With a massive 1200cc V4 that made silly amounts of power back in the day with a single disc brake, the original VMAX was a bit of a death trap, but that's what made it great. Great. This was a cruiser that defined an entire new segment, the muscle bike. They couldn't go around a corner worth a damn, but you didn't give a damn when you were out accelerating near anything at the stoplight of your local town. Let's get a sound check on the Big Boar V4 Fun. An honorable mention is Harley's V-Rod, but the V-Max is truly the original muscle bike and it's hard to ignore the heritage and history the bike has. Also, Yamaha is still making them. You can get a new V-Max and rip your own V4 Cruiser down the straightaways. When it was released, the V-Max garnered instant critical acclaim and earned the title Bike of the Year from Cycle Guide. The V-Max was sold with only minor modifications to the 1985 model year until the 2007 model year, which is pretty crazy. The V-Max was noted for its quick acceleration, but it was also criticized 
criticized for its poor cornering ability and soft suspension. Again, this ain't a bike you're going to want to be taken on a track day, but boy, it is cool. The VMAX is a piece of history, and a cruiser putting down 145 horsepower to the wheels is okay in my book. Number three on our top 10 greatest bikes is the Ducati 916. Ah, the Ducati 916, the prettiest bike on today's list and arguably the prettiest bike to have ever been made, according to many, many riders. You have to understand the context and what was going on when Ducati created this motorcycle because it is a quantum leap forward for the time. But first, just look how achingly beautiful this thing is. Seriously, look at it. The Ducati 916 replaced the 888 and was a total reimagining for the bright red two-wheeled vehicle maker from Italy. Designed by Massimo Tamburini, the 916 made about 100 bhp and weighed about 200 kilograms, which didn't make it a rocket ship by any means, even for the time, but it was really more the quality of the performance rather than the quantity. If you want a true Ducati experience that is teeming with character, this is the one. This bike is important for a variety of reasons, but it really spawned the modern Ducati look and feel that we know and love today. It also spawned the arguably superior 716, which Ducatistas swear is the Ducati of this generation to have. With its carbureted sound, dry clutch, and pure Italian looks, this is one bike you won't want to miss. Let's listen. Number four on our list today has to be the Triumph Bonneville. Even though I did the parallel twin engine dirty on our engine sound tier list, the Triumph Bonneville is one of those classic and paradigm shifting motorcycles we have to mention on our video. The Bonneville defined the British parallel twin roadster and spawned an entire generation of cafe racers, scramblers, and more. Originally launched in 1958, the Bonneville's looks haven't changed much over the years and the original recipe is still there. A beefy parallel twin engine, big leather banana seat, and a naked body style. The the Bonneville is a great do-anything bike, even though future iterations are more refined and other manufacturers have actually made better Bonneville clones, see the Kawasaki W800, but the Bonnie still has those classic big bore parallel twin sounds. Let's listen. The Bonneville is named after the Bonneville Salt Flats in America, where Triumph attempted to break several speed records. Even though nowadays it'll make your head spin how many Bonneville variants there are, the original Bonnie was and still is a classic bike you wouldn't want to skip out on. Our next bike is, of course, the Yamaha WR450R. Known for its dirt bike prowess, the WR450 has evolved to become one of the go-to supermoto conversion bikes. Here in the mean streets of Texas, the WR has a cult following, both in 250 trim and in 450 trim for those among us who are a bit more masochistic and enjoy converting a dirt bike into a street bike. The WR is a bulletproof platform that's won loads of races off-road and stolen the hearts of many teenage boys watching supermoto videos on YouTube. Chief advocates of these are Jake the Garden Snake, even though he's moved on to the Big Red Pig, the XR650, which is a legendary Baja bike in its own right, Chase on Two Wheels with his WR250, and many others. Let's get a sound check. Keep in mind, since the WR is a four-stroke single cylinder, it's not going to have the same kind of beautiful sounds we've heard from our other bikes, but the fact still remains that the WR450 is one of the greatest off-road machines of all time. Our next bike is a stranger to no one in the cafe scene, it's the Honda CB750. The bike that started it all in many folks' opinions, the Honda CB750 is another bulletproof mill from Honda, and it arrived at a time when there was simply nothing else quite like it on the road. With an overhead cam, a 750cc inline 4, and 67 bhp, the CB defined an entire generation of motorcycles and is considered by many to be the first true sports bike. It also created the UJM, or Universal Japanese Machine trend of upright ergonomics, naked looks, and an inline 4 engine. This formula would be tweaked and retooled to give us all sorts of bikes we have today. Chief among them is the original Fireblade we talked about earlier in this video. Ask any old head about the CB750 and you'll likely get a story about how their uncle, maybe their cousin had one, and how cool it sounded. Which, speaking of, let's take a listen. When we talk about paradigm shifting motorcycles, it's pretty tough to beat the CB750. 
The next bike on our list will be familiar to Triumph Nuts, and it is the Triumph 955i Daytona. Now, unless you live under a rock, I love the Triumph Daytona, specifically the second generation 675R. I've owned three of these bikes, and I'll probably buy more of them as my life progresses. They are seriously that good. But I must give credit where credit is due, and I can't in good conscience place my own favorite bike in the greatest bikes of all time list. No, the 955i was a truly special bike. Ask any owner of the 955 and they will sing its praises. The British brand launched a big bore triple cylinder sport bike at a time where it basically made no sense to do so. It didn't really compete with the leader bikes of the day, and honestly, it just doesn't matter. The 955i spawned Triumph's triple revival and gave us bikes like the Street Triple, one of the best all around street bikes ever created and huge rippers like the Speed Triple, but let's see what that triple actually sounds like. <laughs> The 955i goes down in history as a bike that shouldn't have been made, but it was, and we are all better for it. Now, this list of the greatest bikes of all time would not be complete without our S-tier Suzuki SV650. The SV650. What can be said about this bike that hasn't already been said? If you want to get started with motorcycling, but you don't know what to get, the answer is always an SV650. With a 650cc V-twin making all kinds of burbly good sounds, upright ergonomics, bulletproof reliability, sold as both a naked model model and a fully fared model, this is basically a Ducati monster that makes sense. The SV650 is my choice for beginner riders since Suzuki has made about a billion of them and you can find parts anywhere, and they've been making them for a long time. They're well documented as track day specials as well, the SV650 can basically do no wrong and is an extremely important to motorcycling world since it's the starter drug of choice for many two wheel junkies nowadays. Speaking of that V-twin, let's see what it sounds like. If you don't like the Suzuki SV650, well then by god you can just go f yourself. Our penultimate motorcycle on today's list is the VFR750 from Honda. Viffer owners rejoice! I have included the mighty VFR in a talking point for today's video. The original VFR750 was created at a time when Honda was feeling extremely experimental. They were building new bikes, open class bikes, testing new engine configurations, and more. The VFR was born out of those experiments and Honda's desire to make V4 sounds. The VFR had some space age stuff baked into it like a single sided swing arm, a feature to this day, it was at a time when those sorts of things were seen as sorcery, and at a time when bikes were getting more and more well suited to one particular task, the VFR could seemingly do everything well. It could go around corners, it could commute, hell it could even be a hyper mile if you wanted to. But the best part about a VFR is that sweet, sweet V4 that it has. Take a listen. <laughs> A truly genre-defining bike, the VFR proved to the world that sport bikes didn't need to be flashy, uncomfortable, and horrible, they could be understated, elegant, and refined. There's a reason VFR owners say that it stands for Very Fine Ride, and I have to agree. Our last bike on our list of the greatest motorcycles ever made definitely is flashy, it's the first generation MV Agusta F4. You might be confused why I've included an MV Agusta in here, but hear me out. MV, despite being a company that seemingly is always teetering on the edge of bankruptcy, is an iconic brand. They've made some of the most achingly beautiful and desirable machines on two wheels that we mere mortals have ever seen. The MV Agusta F4 in its first iteration in the 750cc configuration is one such machine. It came out in 1999 and absolutely stunned the sport bike world. I mean, look at it. It still looks fresh and amazing today. Now, if your jaw is on the floor from this bike, there's a good reason. In fact, the same guy who designed the Ducati 916, the most beautiful bike in the world, actually designed this bike too. Seems like he's pretty good at his job. Let's listen to the sounds of this bike.
Whether you love or hate flashy Italian bikes, the MV Agusta F4 deserves a place here and absolutely changing the design game of motorcycles and showing us what was possible in the coming years. Now, that's gonna wrap it up for today's video. What do you guys think? Did we miss any? A few honorable mentions for us today are Yamaha's R1 with that beautiful crossplane inline four, the Aprilia Tuono for being one of the best street bikes ever, and as much as I hate to say it, the Ninja 250 for being a gateway for many folks into the wonderful world of riding motorcycles. Now, I'd like to let you in on a secret. Imagine a place where you can come, learn about bikes, hang out with like-minded individuals, get access to exclusive content, and best of all, hang out with me, one-on-one. -on -one. Sounds pretty sweet, huh? What if I told you all you need to do is hit the link below to learn more about it? That's because I'm talking about my Patreon, my dude. It started out as the Beginner Bike Giveaway series, and we've still got that going on. The KTM RC390 is going to be shipped out, but the community aspect has really grown to be the best part about it. We've got channels on our Discord server, which is a chat room you can access on desktop or mobile for memes, bike purchase decisions, general general chats, and more. You also get to participate in our weekly $100 Revzilla gift card giveaways as part of our It Came From Craigslist series. So if you want the best chance to win our giveaway RC390 and join over 630 people who have already signed up, hit the link below and get started. I promise you won't regret it, just ask any of our giveaway bike winners or our current members in our comments below. Go to patreon.com slash to get started today. Thanks again for watching this video, I hope you enjoyed it, I'll catch you guys in the next one, see you later. Fact. The world's largest snail is about 91 centimeters. Goodbye.